First things first, Mikael, how are you? Pretty good, okay. I would say. It's uh, been a long tour, okay. and we still have another week or some, something like that to go on this European run. So very tired, very blasé. Okay. So and then I miss home. I don't necessarily like that there's no equilibrium between the creative work mm. and touring. Because even in the middle of a, crea of a creative process, there's always talks sure. and plans on how we're going to present this live, which is a bit disturbing to me. Okay. Actually. Uh, so I don't, I changed a lot, I think. But it takes a long time for you yourself to discover that, I think, because you do things just out of routine. Sure. You do the record, then you go on tour. But, and I, I'm one of those guys who listen to signals. Like, if I start disliking something, there's mm -hmm. a chance that I walk away, if you know what I mean. Not saying I'm going to split up the band or leave the band or stuff like that, but rearrange the mm -hmm. priorities. And for me, the, like, of course, my private life has become more of a, uh, priority. Mm. I mean, it's always been a priority, but m even more so that I want to spend more time at home mm -hmm. and um, spend more time writing. Okay. And the touring part gets in the way okay. for that. You mentioned this fearless attitude, and 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 uh, like you say, the change doesn't happen overnight. It kind of uh, seeps in. So. But do you know when, when that attitude kind of starts to, to enter your mind? Was it around Heritage when, when, when the music also started to...? Now, once the Heritage record was done, we, we were excited about it. I mean, we're always excited about a new record, but that was a, a step sideways or, mm -hmm. you know, it was something completely different to what we've done before. And we were excited to see how that would go down, I guess. I guess we we still wanted some type of gratification from mm. that we can do these things and still maintain a crowd. And yes, we did, but we also got a lot of people who didn't like that thing. Sure. And then it becomes a new priority. It's kind of proving them that yes, it does work, and proving them it's still open. Mm. You know that type of thing. Uh, but. You know, like, it's always been difficult for me, ever since I had my children, especially, right. to leave and go away on tour, you know, and come back home. And, and they're, like, when the kids are really young, you come back and they're shy mm. or even don't recognize you, that type okay. of thing. Uh, which is, you know, as you can imagine, sure. horrible. Sure. And now my kids are older, but still, like, when we went on the US tour and I explained to them I'll be away for, for quite a long time. And they're, they're like holding t their tears back okay. and that kind of stuff, even at like when they're 12 and 9, like they are now. And that felt like it's not right, you know. And besides, I, hadn't, I wasn't fully convinced that I wanted to go. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of things working against that decision, but I went out doing my job. You say they're, they are 12 and 9, and so I suppose, do, do they understand what you, what you, what you do? Yes, but they're indifferent. Okay. I, think, I think they're indifferent to, to what I do. Okay. They're not indifferent to the fact that I'm away. Mm. Um, I think part, like with time, they probably grow more, you know, they probably understand that, mm. you know, I did this not for my own ego, just, you know, sure. part of it, of course, is for my own ego and what I want to do, but I also mm. do it for them, you know. And it's a, there is a big paradox, a massive paradox about doing something for someone that you love so much as you love your children, which means, also means that you're going to be away from them. Mm. But they understand that, I think to a certain extent they're used to that, but still, it's still horrible. I mean, I can put it any other way, it's still horrible going away from them. And I can, I, I hate it, you know. So if we, if we go back maybe two years and then and you start thinking again about making a new album, is, is that in the back of your mind? Well, well, if we make a new album now, I have to leave again? Yeah, and yeah. good question. Yes, it is. You know, that's, it almost stops me from wanting to get mm. on with the creative side because I know the, the tale right. that comes with the press trips and the pressure and... You have to get everything, you know, done within, t like, in time, and you have to to uh, work on a deadline, and then you have to go on tour, mm -hmm. 
so yes, it's bittersweet to come up with g what you think is great music, mm. knowing that this music, there's a chance it would mi make you even more in demand and maybe even more popular and there's bigger demand and there's offers that you can't refuse and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's weird actually, mm. but like I said, I listen to what I feel inside mm. and I be become better at saying no. Okay. Uh, much to the agony of our management and perhaps the record label and the people that we work with who, want, who are also doing this for a living, sure. or also supporting their children and families by being away and working. Um, but I think, like what I said, I'm not so afraid. Mm. Like an offer that comes up might be great or whatever, but I can turn it down now knowing it's not the end of the world. Right. Even that exact same offer might come back at a time where it's more convenient. Mm -hmm. to go out and I also uh, stopped the long touring cycles we tried to keep it around three weeks okay. but with that said the first tour was five and that was one of them offers I couldn't say no because Black Sabbath were mm -hmm. playing their last show in Los Angeles and we were asked to support them and it's like <laughs> you can't say no to that they're my favorite bands. They're the reason why I started. Mm. You know, the, the money was also good or sure. whatever. And if we were going to be there anyways a week or two later. So I said yes. And that ended up being a long tour. So it's very easy to be manipulated into mm. thinking you're doing the right thing or right. you're doing what you decided on. But then, oh my God, you wake up and you're back in the same old tracks. But, I mean, if you put out a record, if I'm going to, like, if I'm going to do this, this is part of the job. Mm. Simple as that. You know? Right. I just want to scale it down a little bit, you know, and do, do less shows. But I assume then, once you start the, the, the process for an album uh, like Sorceress, it, the, the inspiration or the drive has to, be, has to be enough to make you want to go make those concessions mm -hmm. and make those sacrifices. Yeah, uh, but like I, I kind of separate the two okay. to, the, to that extent that like if there would be no touring for a great record, mm -hmm. I'd still be happy. Okay. Okay. You know, like it's that, that time, like if there was no, nothing coming, like I just want to know for, for between the five guys in the band and especially myself as a songwriter, I want to know that I want proof that we did something that we love. And then... I am happy, I would say. Do you feel you have something to prove then as a songwriter? No, well to me. Well, yeah. To myself, yeah. And to the other guys, okay. you know. Yeah, I want to prove I still have it <laughs> to myself. And I, not by like doing, like for me, I just want to write song, a song or a collection of songs that I, makes me feel something mm. that I think is good, that I could listen to. I'm very picky about music. Sure. So if I could come up with something myself that I like, that I could listen to, that's, that's all the proof I need. If you know what, what, I mean. what was the first track for Sorcerers that kind of gave you this feeling? That kind of Not the first one I wrote, actually. Okay. Uh, that became, that, that the first one I wrote was a song called The Wildflowers, and I only understood that song as a good song once we started playing it live, actually. It would, we do it well. You know, it's like, it, it's mm -hmm. a good song. But I think um, probably the song Sorceress. Okay. Once I wrote that, I know that this is good. This is a bit different. I mean, it's, we've never really done a meat and potato song like that. Mm -hmm. There's a song on there called A Fleeting Glance, which I also felt like this is new. Mm -hmm. uh, the song Era, Strange Brew, which was a collaboration between myself and Frederick. Like, wow, this is something Are special. Well the, well, the word you, you use, something new, is, is that kind of your, your barometer of, of when something is good? When you feel something Not different? Not necessarily, but mm. I love it. When mm. I mean, the, the parameter is good mm. or great or fantastic. Actually, I would go for the latter. You know, right. I want it to be fantastic, not just good. I've written a lot of good songs that I don't deem, that I don't really feel anything for, okay. you know and uh, discarded a lot of good stuff. 
Mm. Because it's not good enough. Good doesn't necessarily mean good enough. So fantastic. I want it to be fantastic, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think the source of rest record, all of our records, there there's no masterpieces mm. in our discography from me. Really? No, no, not a record that's just full on fantastic. They're all flawed. So, I think. So in a sense, when you say you have something to prove to yourself, is that what you're after, so to say? To, Maybe. to make the perfect record in a way? Maybe, but I don't, think it, I don't think I can muster up a perfect record. Because, like, and you won't even know that. You, sure. know? you won't know that until, what, like 20 years later and you're still listening to your own music? Mm. Like, I don't know how the, 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 the person behind the music could say that this is my masterpiece course, yeah. or our masterpiece. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, we haven't done a, a masterpiece record. 